Hey guys, it is Jenna, what is up? And welcome back to the Board Game Garden. Today, we are going to be talking about art in board games. And art to me is one of the most important things when it comes to drawing in my attention to a board game before I even know about the gameplay. There are so many board games that I want right now that are on my wish list that I haven't even looked into the gameplay and the mechanisms that are in the board game I just want it solely based on the art. I don't know if I'm the only person. I don't know if this is a problem. Maybe I should seek some help with this, but please let me know down in the comments if you also get drawn into board games and just automatically want a board game just based off of what it looks like on the outside. Because I would love to know if I'm not, I'm hoping I'm not the only one. I'm sure I'm not the only one. Um, but today you guys can tell by the title that we are going to be talking about some of my board games in my collection with my favorite art. I have 10 physical board games and then I also am going to add at the end a few board games that I, again, just want based off of the art. So let's get into this. We have a bunch to go through. Um, so if you guys are wanting to see some of my favorite art in some board games that we have in our collection, then just keep on watching and I hope you enjoy. Also, hopefully this, uh, this audio is a little bit better this time. I changed up a few things, we will see. Um, I am just gonna play around with stuff as the time goes on and hopefully we can find a good balance of volume and a bunch of different things. So yes, let's get into this video. So the first game that I wanna chat about is one that's pretty new to our collection and it is one that a lot of people talk about when it comes to, ooh, the components are falling. Honey Buzz is often talked about when it comes to its art because the artist Anne, which I'm going to refer to everybody just by their first name because I do not want to butcher anybody's last names, um, but Anne did such a fabulous job with Honey Buzz. The art on the cards are absolutely stunning. The art on the board is beautiful and honestly if I ever do like a best production type of um, list this will definitely be on it as well. Just a little spoiler there. But Honey Buzz is such a beautiful game. I will be putting over some clips of like the actual art so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But in Honey Buzz, you are working as bees trying to fulfill orders and build up your hive. And it is just such a fun game. A little bit of worker placement, a little bit of a really cool action mechanism where when you complete a hex of five different hexes or six different hexes, I think it's five. Um, you get to complete or you get to do all of those actions in that hex. So it's a very fun game. I've only played it once with Francis, but I'm really excited to try it out solo um, as well as with three and four players. So that is Honey Buzz number one on the best art in our collection. I feel like this is one that a lot of people talk about. So I don't need to talk about it too much because we all know how beautiful Honey Buzz is. Next up is a smaller cooperative card game that I don't think I've talked about here on the channel before, but that is Similo. Similo is one that we got pretty early on and I absolutely love this game. We have three different versions. They have a ton of different ones. Um, there are some like animal and zoo animal ones that I want to get my hands on, as well as there are some like horror ones. You can play those around Halloween. Um, and there's also a new Harry Potter one, which I would love, love to get my hands on as well. Um, but in Similo, it is a cooperative game. You can play with two and up players. You can play with as many people as you want, which I absolutely love about this game. And I kind of refer to this game as guess who, but a little bit elevated. And also it's not just a two player game. You can play it with more people. It is cooperative. And basically there's going to be one person that has chosen one of the cards, one of the characters. All of the cards are just different characters. I have fables, which are like different Disney characters. Um, I have Similo History, which are people throughout history, important people throughout history. And then we also have myths, which are like mythological um, creatures. So these are the three that we have. And basically you have a grid of, I believe 12 cards, 12 characters. And there's one person that is trying to get you to guess one of those 12 characters, the one that they picked. And they are using other character cards to kind of give you clues on whether the character that they're trying to get you to choose has similarities with that character 
or none, or like no similarities, opposite of that character. So you're either placing a character card straight or I guess, vertical or horizontal, and then you're kind of giving clues on that. So for example, if Alice from Alice in Wonderland is the character that someone is trying to get you to guess, they would maybe put down Little Mermaid um, in order to try to get you to eliminate or deduce some of the male characters that might be on the board. Not really board, you're kind of just putting it on the table, but out on the table. And it's a lot of fun, it's a little bit of a deduction game, which you guys know how much I love deduction games, but I'm going on too much about the actual game. The reason why I put this in this list is because I absolutely love the art in Similo. It is so adorable. I love the art style. The characters are adorable. I will be showing you guys some of them. The artist that does all of these, what is the artist's name? It is from Horrible Guild. Um, and I actually don't know who the artist is. I absolutely love the style that they have in these. The Harry Potter, I just saw someone post about the Harry Potter Simolo, and the characters are so darn cute. Oh my goodness. This is probably some of my favorite character art from a game. Um, I also love uh, Santorini as well, um, but Similo is one that I wanted to chat about. It is such a fun game. Um, each pack is pretty affordable. I think it's like 10 to 15 dollars for each pack. They have so many different ones to choose from and I definitely recommend checking out Similo from Horrible Guild. I also didn't mention, but Honey Buzz is from Elf Creek Games, if you guys do not know. And then next up, moving into one of my favorite small box games, Sunset Over Water. This is a game published by Pencil First Games. We've had this one for a while. It is illustrated by Beth Sobel, and I think there might be another game here from Beth Sobel. I'm not 100% sure. Um, this actually might be the only one that I'm talking about today, but obviously you guys know how talented Beth Sobel is. Um, and the cards in this game are gorgeous. I absolutely love, there's a bunch of landscape cards. If you do not know Sunset Over Water, you are playing as artists going out and painting different pictures to then sell to people. And those people are wanting you to commission different art pieces with different things. So there might be someone that wants you to sell them an art piece that has a waterfall and flowers. So you are going out in the morning, you are simultaneously picking a card that then picks the turn order as well as what direction you can go and how many paintings you can paint that day. So for example, if you put down a card that says that you wake up the earliest, you get to go first and you get to move in the direction paint how many pictures and add it, and then eventually you'll be able to sell those landscape cards to those commissioners to get points. And it is just such a fun, easy, lighthearted, calming game. I love the art so, so much. Beth Sobel did such a good job. Um, so yes, that is Sunset Over Water. Next up is a game that I'm sure you guys have heard about um, when it comes to its art. Again, components are falling, hopefully none <laughs> do after this. But this is Parks and Parks is published by Keymaster Games and the artist is, I'm not 100% sure, I believe the artists are a bunch of different people and I think that's the reason why I love the art in this game so much is because all of the cards, which I believe there's like 50, 50 something, I don't know where it says it, but it says it somewhere. There are over 50 something cards in here that were illustrated by a bunch of different people. And all of the cards are national parks throughout the United States and they are so beautiful. The style range is incredible. There are so many different cool styles throughout the cards. I also just love the general style of this game as well. Not only the cards, but the components and the board, and I just love how it all looks on the table. Um, it is such a beautiful game. The like path that you're making has some beautiful art on it as well. You guys can tell by the cover that it is absolutely stunning. And Parks is definitely one that I just love to get to the table just to look at it. It is just gorgeous. So Parks had to be added, even though a lot of people already know how beautiful Parks is, I had had to put it on this list. It is gorgeous and I can't wait to see the art in the new wildlife expansion. Um, I still want to get the Nightfall expansion as well because I've been really enjoying this solo recently. So that is Parks, some gorgeous art in that one. 
Um, even just the cover is just gorgeous with like the bears and the waterfall. I'm just obsessed. Moving to another Elf Creek game. Um, this is another one that we just recently got from Elf Creek and this is Merchants of the Dark Road. It's a little bit, there we go, that's better. It was like reflecting the light. Um, but Merchants of the Dark Road is illustrated by Andrew Bosley, which is I believe the same person that did Everdell. I did not add Everdell to this list because I feel like everyone adds it to the beautiful art list. We all know how gorgeous Everdell is, but Andrew did such an amazing job with the art in Merchants of the Dark Road. I am obsessed with the style and just the table presence of this game. The cards, the little critter cards, the little bumblebee, oh my god. The style of this game and just like the color scheme really draws me in as something that's very different than a lot of other games. It's a little bit of a darker style and I just think it is so beautiful. Um, it's just, wow. If you have not seen all of the components and the art, in Merchants of the Dark Road, you definitely need to, I guess you'll be seeing it right now, um, so hopefully you like that, but definitely go look at other pictures of Merchants because it is stunning. And I feel like the darkness of the box doesn't do the game and the art justice, um, but again, I really enjoy the box. So um, yes, that is Merchants of the Dark Road by Elf Creek Games. Next up is a game that has kind of a similar theme. It's going to Fall. Oh, no, we're good. Um, it has a similar theme to Parks where you are going out and you are buying these cards that have beautiful, beautiful illustrations on them. You are literally trekking the world. The box is gorgeous, but what really draws me into this game is the card art. Oh my gosh, I am obsessed. I'm not sure who the artist, actually, it might say on the back here. Um, the art is by Marta and Alessi, Aleski. Um, I'm probably butchering their names, but uh, I didn't even try to do their last names. Um, but they did a fabulous job with the card art. There are a bunch of different locations throughout the world that are illustrated on these cards and the colors are absolutely stunning and just the art is so beautiful. This game is so much fun. It's a really lightweight trekking the world. <laughs> Obviously that's what the name is, um, but it is just a lightweight trekking the world game where you get to go to all of these different places and look at all of these gorgeous cards and it really makes you feel like you're traveling the world. So Trekking the World um, is another one that I absolutely love. The art, it is published by Underdog Games um, and it's such such a beautiful game. And then lastly, for ones that I have on the table, I will be talking about a few from behind me, but this one is Santa Monica, which I love this game so much. I really need to play this game more. I wish there was a solo variant to this game because it is only two to four players, um, unfortunately, but I think I might look on BGG, um, Board Game Geek, the website, because I've I've discovered that there are a lot of kind of fan-made solo variants on the website, the Board Game Geek website. So I really want to look into see if there's any games that we have that don't technically have a solo variant, but maybe someone made one. And I feel like this would be a good one for someone to try to make a solo variant for. But Santa Monica is published by AEG and the illustrations are from do, 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 Jeremy. Jeremy did such a fabulous job. Honestly, I did not know anything about the gameplay in Santa Monica before I bought it. I literally just bought it for the art on the cards. The art in this game is so freaking cute. I love the color scheme. It has a little bit more of a brighter kind of pastel color scheme and the kind of like sketched art of the buildings that you're putting onto your Santa Monica pier are just so freaking beautiful. I just realized now that I didn't really explain the gameplay of some of these, but I'm sure you guys will see in other videos me explain these games, and I'm sure that if you're already in the hobby, you know pretty much how these games play. Um, but in Santa Monica, you're building out your Santa Monica Pier with um, drafting cards that have amazing art, 
and you are getting different people, so either locals, VIPs, or tourists, and you're moving those tourists and people around to different cards in order to score points, and it is just a lot of fun. So Santa Monica, I got dragged in by the art, but the gameplay is just as good, and I absolutely love the like sketchy style of this one. You guys will see with a few other games that I really enjoy that kind of sketchy art. Not like sketchy, like bad sketchy, but like kind of drafty kind of art, if that makes sense. So yes, that is Santa Monica. So moving into some of the games that are behind me that I did not want to take off of the shelf. The first one is right here. It is Bitoku. I love the art in this game. I think this is some of my favorite art ever. Um, it is absolutely stunning. Much like Santa Monica, I kind of bought this game without really knowing the full gameplay of it. I looked up kind of generally the mechanics and stuff, which I saw some dice worker placement and dice manipulation, which I absolutely love that mechanic. So I was like, oh, good art and dice um, worker placement, I am in. So I ended up buying Batoku. It is illustrated by Edu or Edu. Um, and wow, they did a fabulous job. This is a gorgeous game. Um, and I was very surprised with the gameplay as well. Um, so that is Bitoku, published by Devere Games. And then next up is one of my favorite games to the left of me. That is Seize the Bean. This is illustrated by Mario and it is published by Quality Beast. And this is a game where you are a owner of a cafe, a coffee shop, and you are serving your customers upgrading your coffee, your products, and updating or upgrading your coffee shop, the look of your coffee shop, bringing in different customer groups. It is just such a fantastic game. I definitely recommend it um, to anybody, but Mario did such a fabulous job with the illustrations. Again, this is one that has that kind of sketchy kind of artwork, and I love it so much. The cards are hilarious. If you ever end up getting this, um, I guess you'll be seeing some cards on the screen right now, but the cards are so funny because there's a bunch of different um, groups of customers that you can integrate into your game. Um, I believe the base game comes with like 20 something, even maybe 30 different customer groups. And in each game, you are picking six customer groups to play with. So the replayability of this game is absolutely fantastic and all of the different customer groups come with a different like coffee shop upgrades that kind of go along with that customer group and really just like the theme is just great i love all of the different things that you can put into your coffee shop so for example like you can get a disco ball to add to your coffee shop for the party animal group to kind of bring in that uh, group of people um, and make them want to come to your coffee shop. So it is just so funny. There are some really, really funny ones um, in there. The cards are hilarious. And I just love, love the art style that Mario uh, does. So yes, that is Seize the Bean. And lastly, for the games behind me, one that's hiding behind my right shoulder is Paint the Roses. Um, this is published by North Star Games. And I believe the illustrator is Jackie Davis. I think I've been getting this game out a lot so I've kind of memorized um, Ben the designer and Jackie the illustrator but Paint the Roses is an Alice in Wonderland themed deduction game where you're trying to complete the garden our um, the Queen of Hearts garden before she catches you and it is such a fun game and the art is beautiful. I love the style of the characters. Again, I'm a really big sucker for character art. I think they are adorable and I have the expansion which is the Escape the Castle expansion that came with the deluxe edition. We haven't played it yet but all of the different modules that you can play are attached to a certain character and the art on the cards are absolutely fabulous. I love the style again. Um, and that is Paint the Roses. And then lastly, I kind of just wanted to talk about five different games that have really caught my attention just based off of the art. I'm not gonna get too much into like the gameplay of these games, but I'm just gonna list them off. 
Um, the first one is Meadow. Um, it is one that everyone talks about how beautiful the cards are and how amazing the gameplay is. I've heard that it has a great solo gameplay, so I'm super excited about that. It is just a little bit difficult to find here in Canada right now. I believe there is one place that has it in stock and I really need to buy it. I keep on like putting it off because you know I keep on getting other games and I'm like I don't need it but I really do want it so Meadow is one that I'm really excited to get my hands on eventually once it comes back in stock hopefully it'll come back in stock on either Board Game Bliss or 401 Games because that's where I've seen it for the most affordable so fingers crossed uh, Rebel Studios is the publisher so hopefully they will get that back in stock in some places so I can pick that up um, so that is Meadow. And then second is, what was my second one? Stellar. Stellar is one that I just recently discovered. It is by Renegade Game Studios and it is a like outer space themed game. And the cards in this game, it is a solely like tableau building card game, but the cards have different planets and it's just so beautiful. The background of the cards are black and then all of the different cards have different planets and stuff that are bright, beautiful colors and just on the table, it looks absolutely stunning. So I'm super excited to try that one out. I really do love like tableau building. I'm not 100% sure of the gameplay, but you guys know, I'm just really, really brought in by the art. So Stellar is another one. Third is Living Forest, which I have recently taken a little bit bigger or a little bit more of a look at that game and it looks amazing. I've heard that there's a little bit of luck in it, um, like push your luck kind of mechanism in it, which I don't know if I'm the hugest fan of push your luck. I was going between Botoku and Living Forest. Both of them have gorgeous artwork, but I ultimately ended up getting Botoku because I liked the sound of the gameplay in that one a little bit better. But Living Forest is beautiful and it is one that I would love to try eventually. Um, so that is that one. I'm not 100% sure what the publisher is for that one. But again, I will be putting all of the information up on the screen for you guys. Um, but that is number three. Number four is Flamecraft, which this is a game that was on Kickstarter. Unfortunately, I wasn't into the hobby enough at that point um, to be interested in Kickstarter when it was up. So if I, I don't know, I might have backed it if I was into Kickstarter at that time. Um, it is on pre-order right now on Board Game Bliss and it's not super expensive which makes me really happy and I love the art style in Flamecraft so much. Again it's very similar to Santa Monica and Seize the Bean where it's kind of that like sketched art and it's very adorable and cute. The colors are beautiful and I just love the art style in that one. You're playing as little, I think they're dragons, I don't know if they're dragons or dinosaurs, I think they're, I think they're dragons because flame. Flamecraft. Anyways, in Flamecraft, you are little dragons that are artisans. So there might be like a potter and a painter and oh, just so darn cute. So I'm super excited to um, possibly get that one in the future. And then lastly is Encyclopedia, which is one that was actually on Kickstarter when I was getting a little bit into Kickstarter and I held off. I almost backed it. It looks like such a beautiful game. Again, it has some like dice worker placement mechanisms in there. And again, the like sketched kind of artwork is gorgeous. There are like animals and different things that are very like sketched artwork. You guys will see in the pictures. It is absolutely stunning. Um, Alex over at the Board Game Co. said that he really enjoyed the gameplay. So he kind of made me want to back it as well, but I held off because I'm trying not to get too much into Kickstarter, so maybe when it comes to retail, I will end up picking up Encyclopedia. It looks absolutely amazing, and the artwork is just, oof. Chef's kiss. Can't believe I just did that. Anyways, that is everything for this video. I love chatting about art in board games, so let me know down in the comments any board games that you think that I should check out based off of the ones that I talked about today with artwork, if there's any that you think I would really enjoy. Um, I love animals, different cute characters, um, obviously the like, galaxy kind of theme I really enjoy the artwork for. So let me know down in the comments if there's any that you think I would enjoy the artwork of. Um, just comment down below if you want to chat. I love chatting in the comments. It's been 
One of my favorite things uh, with this channel recently is just chatting you guys down in the comments. Also give this video a big thumbs up, it really helps the channel be seen. Subscribe if you have yet to do so. Once we hit 2,000 subscribers, which I believe at this point we're at like 1.6 something thousand subscribers, so we're getting close. Once we hit 2,000, Francis and I are gonna sit down and do our top 20 favorite board games currently. So that's Francis are walking around upstairs. So definitely subscribe if you have yet to do so. Um, I love you guys so much. Thank you for joining me today. And remember, you are somebody's reason to smile and I will see you in my next video. Bye friends.